All right, everyone. So I've been reading the news for hours now, and there really aren't a lot of news reports that interest me. Uh, so I'm just going to do some flow of consciousness in this video. Everyone wants to talk about the inauguration, et cetera, et cetera. It's a boring subject. The guy is going to be our president, our president. He's going to be our president for at least eight years because he could get reelected. Who knows? People may love this guy. I don't know. People may may end up revering this guy. He could be like the boring president that a lot of people want. Maybe a lot of people just want uh, a president who, you know, needs to take naps all day. I, I don't know. But you look at the video of Biden before he starts uh, signing the executive orders that he did today. <clears throat> the guy looks like he's about to fall asleep. He's got that mask on. And you know he doesn't even know what the hell he's signing. Like, you know. Believe me, I've been <laughs> I've done public speaking before. Uh, I've spoken at dozens of events. Uh, I've done a lot of articles. I've done hundreds of videos, hundreds of videos. And, you know, if you're doing public speaking or if you're doing videos, if you're doing speaking in front of an audience, a live audience, or if you're doing speaking in front of a camera, which eventually, you know, will be broadcasted to hundreds, thousands, if not tens of thousands of people or more, it's all pretty much the same concept. You know you're speaking in front of people and you're in this battle between your you know, your flow of consciousness mode and your self-conscientiousness. You know, you know, you start thinking, what do people think about me? Do people like listening to me? Am I entertaining right now? Am I boring people? Blah, blah, blah. But then, you, you know, once you get into that mode of I really don't give a shit about any of that stuff, that's when you really start to thrive. And I watch Biden talking uh, about these executive orders that he was about to sign, and you can just tell he's not in the, mo the, the, the mood, he's not in the zone, he's not in the flow of consciousness, he's not in the state of flow, he's not. And the big uh, indicator of that is the fact that he's talking from a script. He's reading a piece of paper as he is explaining these uh, executive orders because he doesn't know what he's signing. He doesn't know their details. He's not fully engaged in the occupation. And he's mumbling his words and all that. So yeah, we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have at least four years. I know I said eight years, at most eight years. We're gonna have at least four years of this guy and he's going to be at least entertaining, right? I mean we can at least give him that. He's going to be an entertaining president. He's going to be fun to watch, fun to watch him talk and and people are he's going to be the butt of jokes that's what he's going to be he's going to be the target of comedians the target of jokes because he mumbles his words and he looks like he's about to fall asleep so this guy <laughs> this guy is not a huge threat like i'm not even worried about a biden presidency i haven't lost any sleep i've heard of people losing sleep over this people drinking alcohol because they're so stressed off stressed out about a biden presidency people are crying in front of cameras people are just going through cope right now they're doing some hard cope right now and, and i'm thinking like why you know pe we went through this sort of hysteria when obama got elected remember that when obama got elected people thought it was the end of the world people thought that you know we were going to have a, a a giant horde of of you know afro arab soldiers coming in from the arab peninsula to invade america we we you know, we were expecting uh you know the pan african uh, army to to pop up under uh, obama's uh, you know dictatorial leadership and they're going to start raping all the white women and destroying the suburbs and pillaging and robbing us you know we thought all sorts of apocalyptic stuff we thought it was going to be the end of the world i kind of thought that for a moment until i realized eh, it sounds like a bunch of you know hysterical bullshit and uh, you know i think obama said something like conservatives always think it's the end of the world and in a way he's right uh, we kind of think that it's the end of the world all the time. Uh, we have a five minutes to midnight mentality. And so here we are freaking about, freaking over um, uh, a Biden uh, a presidency, thinking that it's the end of the world. Uh, it's not the end of the world, guys. Uh, I'm not really worried about Biden. I'm not. I'm not worried about Biden 
because I know just by looking at him, for one thing, he doesn't look like he wants to be there. Secondly, it looks like he's not really interested in the work. Thirdly, it looks like he constantly wants to take a nap. And watching him makes me tired and I want to take a nap. You know, a nap sounds like a really good idea right now. And fifthly, we and this is the most important aspect of, of this entire discussion. Fifthly, he's the president. And if you look into the patterns of American foreign policy or policy in general, the patterns of American politics, the president is not the one in full control. He's not. He's got uh, two other houses of government, two other branches of government that can keep him in check. The judiciary and we got the, uh, the Congress. He's one guy. He doesn't have full power. And when I see that video of him talking, you know, reading a script, mumbling his words, I know right there he's not in control. He's not in control. He's signing those executive orders because he was told to sign them. And if you look at those executive orders, some of them are bad, and at least one of them is okay. He's going to reverse what the Republicans did on abortion, but this is clockwork. This is like clockwork. This is standard procedure. The Republicans will do the Mexico City Act, which basically says um, that uh, that uh, 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 American aid to other countries cannot support abortions. Once a Democrat gets in office, he always reverses it. He cancels out the Mexico City law, the Mexico City rule, whatever they call it. This is standard procedure. This is, you know, and people talk about, well, you know, Trump did this thing before he left, saying that uh, that uh, adoption agencies can uh, adoption agencies don't have to give kids to homosexual couples. He did it right before he left. Okay, <laughs> this means absolutely nothing because. He knows damn well, and the GOP knows damn well that the Democrats are just going to reverse it, and that's what's going to happen. The Democrats will reverse it. He did it right in the last moment. It's like, well, it's too late, buddy. Okay, it doesn't really matter. So it doesn't mean Jack did a least squat. The whole subject matter of of Biden becoming president is just boring to me. Um, bad things are going to happen. Bad things will always happen. Biden talked about unity. Um, I, he's not going to bring any unity. Um, half of the country hates him, no matter what he, no matter what he does. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention the one executive order that I think is good is his thing on immigration, um, helping illegal immigrants on a path to citizenship. Not a bad idea. They say, well, it'll be an eight-year journey to citizenship. If that succeeds, I don't see what's so bad about that. People are, are mad about this. Oh, he wants to help illegal immigrants become citizens. Hold on a second. Conservatives are always talking about how these people need to do it the right way. Well, if they go on the path of citizenship, isn't that a right way to do it? So why would we, why would we condemn these people for actually pursuing a path to citizenship? They're illegal. They're illegal. We'll legalize them then. Then we have no problems. So that doesn't bother me. Um, helping DACA kids out doesn't bother me. Helping those you know people become citizens that doesn't bother me. I, I don't have any issue with that. I don't care. That doesn't bother me. Um, people get Americanized <laughs> very quickly. Uh, ethnically speaking, I'm Palestinian, uh, and I meet other Palestinians, and I'm like, I am almost nothing like you guys. I'm very Americanized. Um, People from Somalia come to this country. They have kids. Those kids are super Americanized. Uh, if you look at the U.S. military, if you look at the um, American law enforcement, it's full of Mexican people, and those Mexican people are very patriotic. I've met a bunch of them. So I'm not really worried about this. It just doesn't bother me. America's still going to be America, whether we got Mexicans or, or, or not. You know, it just doesn't, doesn't bother me. Um... So what does worry me, though, is the response, you know, 
what's what the, the strategy of tension, the SOT. And I've said this in the past before, you cannot understand politics unless you have an understanding of the strategy of tension, the SOT. Um, Antifa burns some property down. Righties will uh, get mad at the Democrats. They hate the Democrats. They say the Democrats are destroying our country. They breach the Capitol building. They want to kill politicians. This is an example of the strategy of tension. You piss off one side, gets the other side even more pissed off. And that's what worries me. Biden is not going to be the only focus here. It's going to be Kamala Akbar. It's going to be Mama Kamala. Grandpa Joe is going to take a nap. Mama Kamala, on the other hand, is going to be the focus of attention because she's the first black woman to get that high up there in a political position, which is, in her case, the vice presidency. We had Obama, who was the president, but we never had a black woman be the president, but we now got a black woman as the vice president, the VP. So the the VP, <laughs> I almost just continued on with that voice, the VP is going to be a focus of major attention nationally and internationally. Kamala Akbar is going to say a bunch of stuff that's going to piss off the right wing. It's just inevitable. It's going to happen. Either she's going to say, like, hey, I think Islam is a cool religion, or she's going to wish Muslims a happy Ramadan, or she's going to say the hijab is actually a good way to curtail the spread of coronavirus. She's going to say something like that. It's going to piss off a bunch of people. And the right-wing media is going to go up to the roofs. Breitbart, that stuff's going to thrive, just like it did with the Obama administration. I actually looked into the rank of Breitbart.com. That is a super popular website. They're like number 200th something most popular website in the freaking world. There are millions of websites out there. And out of all the millions of the website, out of all these millions of websites in the world, Breitbart is number 200 something. That's huge. So these guys are really, really big. Donald Trump pardoning Bannon. That's a big thing. For one thing, what Trump did to Bannon by pardoning him. That is, remember I said this years ago, none of you guys probably remember this because this was a long time ago and I said this in uh, for a, a video channel that got canceled out, but I'm going to say this now. Years and years and years ago, the, supposedly there was this falling out between Trump and, 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 and Bannon and Bannon was kicked out of the administration, supposedly. Um, and I said, watch, they're going to be friends. They're not going to be enemies in the long run. And I was right. Trump pardoned Bannon. Bannon. What type of crime was Bannon being charged with? It was really fraud and money wiring. Um, remember, there was this whole project to have private funding for the wall between the U.S. and Mexico? Because they said, well, if the politicians won't do it, then the people will do it. So people were donating millions and millions of dollars to this project. What happened? Well, allegedly, because the trial was never done, because Trump pardoned this guy, but allegedly, Bannon was pocketing a bunch of the money for himself. And he was arrested and he was charged. Trump goes ahead and pardons him. Why did Trump pardon him? I can't fully know, but I suspect it's because Trump needs him. He is needed by the right wing. That guy needs to be around so that he can provide more scheming and strategizing for the right wing. And remember, this is the same Bannon who backs Hindu nationalists and European identitarians, essentially Nazis. This is not a good person. The fact that Trump pardoned this guy speaks volumes about Trump, because Trump is part of that same ideological strata. There are some things about Trump that I like, and I've said what I liked about him. I think the only thing good from him was what he did with the Supreme Court, and he did some good things with taxes. Other than that, to hell with Donald Trump. I don't really care about the guy. I think he's an asshole. He is. He's an asshole. Uh, that's my opinion. 
uh, and the fact that he pardoned this Nazi, this 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 Nazi identitarian schemer Bannon, who supports Hindu nationalists, European Nazis, and pushes literature like Julius Evola, which is just old ass fascist literature, that saw a revival back in like 2014, 2015, and that revival was marked by <laughs> Breitbart.com pushing that kind of stuff. The fact that all this happened tells me everything I need to know about Bannon. And the fact that Trump helped this guy is the same, probably the same reason why he helped Shalom Rubashkin. Remember what Trump did with Shalom Rubashkin? Shalom Rubashkin was a scammer in, I want to say, Iowa, who... Uh, did a bunch of loan fraud, and at the same time, he was enslaving a bunch of people in his kosher uh, deli factory, kosher meat factory. And uh, he was sentenced to, I forgot what the sentence was, but it was a long sentence. He was sentenced to quite a long time in prison, and Trump uh, pardoned him. Why? Probably because Trump wants to get on the good side of the, uh, of the Jewish voting population, the Zionist voting population. Same reason why Trump pardoned Bannon, because Bannon is considered to be a hero in the American right, but he's a psychopath. So, yeah. To hell with all these people. I don't give a damn about these people. They're all assholes to me. Uh, we're going to have four years, at least four years of Biden. It's going to be a comedy. Uh, we're going to see Grandpa Joe wanting to take a nap, and we're going to see Kamala Akbar just pissing off the right wing. And we're going to see the two sides collide. It's going to be wild, guys. It's going to be two sides just perpetually getting pissed off at each other. And it's going to be the same American circus bullshit that we've been seeing for hundreds of years. Anyway, yeah. Hope you guys have enjoyed this message. You guys just heard some theology. God bless.